Putting a price on married life. Today, the court upheld a minimum income requirement for a foreign spouse to enter this country. I still can't believe this, this is happening in Britain. Tonight, we meet the families torn apart by the Home Office ruling. He missed her learning to crawl. He missed her learning to walk. I couldn't believe that here in England, the rights of a British child were so... Uh, not even neglected, but just ignored. How much should you have to earn before you're allowed to get married? The question may sound absurd. It is absurd. But for the many Britons who marry someone from overseas, or at least outside the EU, it's entirely relevant. Today, the Court of Appeal backed up a Home Office ruling that set a minimum income threshold of £18,500. The Home Office says these marriages must not be established in the UK at the taxpayer's expense. Those on the wrong side of it ask why their need to share their life with their loved ones comes at such a high price. Here's Jim Reid. You're going higher? Higher. Higher! I still can't believe this, this is happening in Britain. Legs up! <laughs> I don't feel that we deserved it. I don't feel that anyone deserves to have their family effectively exiled. Your life whilst this appeals are going on, it is on hold. Let's thank you, uh, We're so strong as a couple, and um, we will just keep fighting to the end. Two years ago, ministers tightened the rules, making it harder for a British citizen to bring a husband or wife into the country from outside the EU. Peace will be all right, then. Since then, our courts have been locked in a tussle between the right to protect our borders and the right to a family life. Olivia is half British, half Ecuadorian. Her mother Lizzie was teaching English in South America when she met the local doctor she would go on to marry. The new family wanted to start a new life in Britain. I just felt really confident that he was going to get the visa. I couldn't see any reason why he wouldn't because we were legally married with a British marriage certificate. So this is the um, entry clearance officer's refusal notice. This is when we learnt that we were being refused in March. So how did you feel at that point? <sighs> Devastated. <laughs> I just completely broke down. Um, and I was trying to... Like, I remember my husband saying and sending me the email and reading it online while he was watching me on Skype. And I just sort of read through it and I was just like, that's okay, just look up and say, it's all right, it's just a blip, this will be sorted out in a couple of weeks, don't worry, we'll be fine. And I looked up and just, just tears, <laughs> I just couldn't do anything. For a UK citizen like Lizzie to bring her husband into the country, she now has to earn £18,600 a year. Her husband's income isn't taken into account. The government says the new rule will drive down net migration, cut the benefit bill and promote integration. But the level of income needed is set above the full-time minimum wage. Just under half of British people uh, in employment would not be earning enough annually to sponsor a family migrant under this policy. Um, so, and among certain groups, among women, it's, it's a much higher proportion, 60 plus percent. Uh, it's higher for people outside of London, where maybe a, a lower wage or even a, a minimum wage goes, goes a longer way. <laughs> Arlene Watty moved from the Philippines to Great Yarmouth to work in a care home and study. She met Stephen, and two years later they married, just after the new law came in. When we take the vow as a married couple, it says a sickness of a poorer till death do us part. Yeah, and as he said, he cannot uh, live without me, me as well. And uh, separating us is like killing us both. Stephen hasn't been earning enough to keep Arlene in the country. She's now fighting a deportation order. The government set this target of reducing overall net migration in this country, and it would argue that this is one way of doing it. Well, surely if that's the case, then we would close our border to these EU countries coming in. Around 30,000 couples apply for a partner visa every year, half from Asia, with the largest numbers from Pakistan and India. 
One in three is now rejected, a number that's doubled as the new rules have come into force. It's perfectly legitimate for, for, for a government um, to try and pursue a very popular policy of returning immigration to more moderate levels. And family reunion is the third largest inflow into Britain. I think in the past the government has thought that uh, there's been some abuse of this channel um, and the system has not encouraged uh, integration, particularly in the case of spouses coming in from the Indian subcontinent and has led to some cases of welfare dependency. This is a letter I wrote to um, the Prime Minister from the perspective of um, Olivia. Please help. I can't hug computer papa. This makes us very sad. These are my shoes now. I am eight months older. Our court date is one year and one month after we applied for visa. Let's go. In you go. In South America, Lizzie had been working in a bank, earning a good local wage. But converted into pounds, that wasn't enough to meet the earnings target and bring her husband back to Britain. Zoom! He missed her learning to crawl. He missed her learning to walk. I couldn't believe that here in England, the rights of a British child were so... Uh, not even neglected, but just ignored completely. I, I was furious. I, I sort of felt like I didn't even recognise this country anymore. For Stephen, it's all about proving he's hit the income threshold. He needs to show six months of earnings above that for an appeal to be successful. You've got to earn the money you know, just to keep going at the moment. And with the cost of um, barristers and solicitors, you know, everything I'm earning is going towards them. But she's worth it at the end of the day. Last year, the Home Office lost part of a test case. The High Court ruled it set the income target at a level that was disproportionate and unjustified. Um, and Today, in the Court of Appeal, that ruling was reversed. Three judges said immigration policy should be left up to the Home Secretary, not the courts. The Home Office decided to put all applications on hold pending the Court of Appeals judgment. Obviously today the, the government has won, so that's a blow to those who are hoping that the High Court's judgment would be upheld. But it's only a, a battle that the government has won. There's a wider war still going on and the individuals may take their case to the Supreme Court if they get permission to do so. You can sort of work out the government welcomed the ruling, saying migrants must be able to integrate and family life should not be established here at the taxpayer's expense. Uh, we're talking here about uh, the right of an individual to marry who they choose, which seems a, a pretty basic right, but it's also the, a pretty basic right to live in a relatively stable country without very large levels of immigration, you might say, and clearly a lot of uh, voters do think that, and similarly the right to live in a relatively integrated society. Earlier this year, a breakthrough for Lizzie and her family. After working in a new job for six months, the Home Office approved her husband's visa. It's like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Um, I can sleep again, I can eat again. It's amazing, it's like life should have been a year ago. Lizzie's husband, Alexander, is now living in Devon and retraining as a British doctor. I can't recover the year that I lost with my daughter, my wife, my family. It's, there is no money enough to, to pay me or my family because of, of, of this year. We lost a lot. And I didn't marry her just to let the UK take her away from me. No, I married her for a reason. She's still here now and she's going to be with me until the day I die. For others, there is still uncertainty. Today's ruling is likely to be challenged in the Supreme Court. Until then, thousands of couples will be told to earn more to pay their way or to make a life outside this country. Jim Reid with that report. Well, we asked the Home Secretary and the Immigration Minister if they'd come on the programme to talk about today's ruling, but they declined.